Thanks, everyone. Uh, so, as he said, my membership on the LWG was the inspiration for giving this talk. Um, we often get questions from mappers who are looking to import or who are looking to use data, often government data that they found online um, for OpenStreetMap, and they ask us, you know, can we use this? Um, so hopefully this talk will give you some tools for research into that area of trying to like figure it out for yourselves, or if you can't figure it out for yourselves, figuring out what questions to ask and also how to present that information to the rest of the community so that people don't have to repeat your steps um, and everybody, you know, all we all learn um, from, from what you found and like keep that for posterity so the next mapper who comes across that data set knows um, where it came from. Um, so this is sort of what I'm going to talk about today. Um, a quick overview of the license for those of you who don't um, already know what it is. Um, some information and some tips about finding this information. Um, I'm going to focus on US data sets because we are at state of the map US. Um, if you really like this topic, you can watch my talk in Heidelberg in two weeks. Uh, that's more focused on international data sets. Uh, so the disclaimer, it's a very long string, and what it means is I am a lawyer, but I am not your lawyer. <laughs> I am, I'm not the foundation's lawyer either, I'm just a volunteer. Don't sue me. Um, okay, so uh, OpenStreetMap is governed by the Open Database License. Um, it's somewhat obscure. It's not uh, something that you know, everyone has heard of, like Creative Commons. Um, but it, is, uh, it has a couple of very interesting clauses. Um, there is a soft share alike clause, where if you are using OSM data, um, you need to share back uh, data that you add to, to that data set. Uh, but only on what I would call a layer by layer basis. Um, so if you are using OSM roads and you added roads, you gotta share back those roads. Uh, but if you are using buildings from somewhere else, um, then you don't have to share back those buildings. Um, the other part of uh, OSM is that we have a lot of data sets, right? So here's like this really quick little snapshot of um, just the front of the contributor page, and you can see all the different countries that are listed. Um, OSM itself requires attribution, right? You've seen like OSM contributors in the corner. Uh, but for all of these data sets that are coming in, we can't possibly list all of them, um, you know, all, all, in, all in the corner of the map, right? So whatever attribution requirement that inbound lot data sets have has to fit with these requirements of ODBL. So in the United States, um, which is somewhat unusual globally, we have a pretty robust public domain. Um, and we also don't actually have any legal protections for databases in of themselves. Uh, so facts are not copyrightable. Um, and uh, we also have a policy in the United States that federal data created by federal employees is automatically in the public domain. Um, each state will have its own law uh, about what is in the public domain, about what restrictions uh, state agencies or um, entities can place on those, um, on that data. Uh, and I think pretty much every state has a public record law which is also a way of getting at some of that data. Um, just, this is, this is more background information about copyright, but like, this is something to keep in mind. Uh, because when you're out there on the internet looking for data, you will sometimes see things that don't actually make any sense. Um, and that should be a signal for you to do some more research, whether that's kind of writing in to ask questions or just kind of Googling around um, and looking for like background information. Uh, just because somebody says that they own something or um, you know, they put a little copyright symbol on it doesn't actually mean that they own it. Like I said, um, you know, there's no 
uh, copyright, for example, in federal data. But somebody, you know, here, somebody might like take that data set, add something to it, and then say that they own it, but what they actually own is just that little tiny thing that they added. So an example of this is like take a Sherlock Holmes novel, right? That's been in the public domain for a very long time, but you still see it being printed by publishers. And what they'll do is they'll add a forward, um, maybe add some notes, add a cover, right? And they'll have the publishers, you know, copyright, you know, and they'll sell the book. Um, but that doesn't mean that the text of it, of the actual story, is belongs to them at all. You could just take that book, rip off the cover, <laughs> rip off the forward, scan it, and um, there's nothing they can do to stop you from doing that. Um, so, you know, that gets to my second point, which is just because something has been digitized doesn't mean that the person who digitized it has any IP rights. Um, but there's something else called contract law. So contracts are what you agree to if you like click I agree or you know some terms of use you might see. Um, and people can write pretty much anything they want into a contract. And a lot of times government entities will require you to agree to certain conditions in order to get access to certain data. So you need to read these terms and see um, whether whether those that contract places conditions on that you um, that, that prevent you from putting that data into OSM. Okay, so I'm going to talk about public records laws. Um, so there's a wide variety among the different states. Um, there have been just a handful of cases, like lawsuits, about this issue. Um, and they've been very split. There's a couple of states, California and Florida, where the courts of those states have said uh, map data, um, you know, it's paid for by the taxpayer, it belongs to the taxpayer, and you county cannot stop the taxpayer from, you know, or anybody, um, you know, from getting at it and from doing whatever they want with it, including uh, using it in commercial products and selling it. Um, other states, um, like New York and South Carolina, have gone a different way, where the courts of those states have said, yeah, um, you know, this is, you know, this is done by the agencies, and the agencies can decide that they want revenue um, from, for, you know, from developing this data. Um, so, unfortunately, uh, it really does depend on what state you are from. Um, but, and then in um, some states we'll have specific statutes um, that say uh, what the individual government agencies can require. Um, so this example is from North Carolina where it says that um, the, the entity, the government entity can require that anybody who gets the data through a public records request ha uh, has to agree that they won't use it for commercial purposes. Um, and that's so that the county can like, then directly sell the data to companies that might want it. Um, on the flip side, um, Pennsylvania sort of went the other way. Um, they enacted a statute that essentially disclaimed copyright on uh, state maps. Um, and they did this retroactively as well as prospectively. Uh, so I guess if you're in Pennsylvania, have fun. <laughs> um, so as an example of like how to find this type of information, um, when you're sort of looking for this um, yourself, so we'll look at Arizona. Um, pretty easy, you just search for Open records. They have a nice web page. Um, they specifically tell you which uh, statutes in the Arizona uh, public law uh, applies to public records. Uh, so this is Title uh, 39, sections 121 through 161. Um, they they also had a helpfully that that red part is a link. So uh, helpfully they have a link. Um, they have just scroll down, Title 39, public records, we're in the right place. 
And okay, so I know this is like, this looks a little scary, um, but you see that each section has like a chapter title that tells you like, what is this section about? Um, and you know, kind of looking through, you look for, is there anything about uh, like how you use the data, anything about restrictions. So you see here we have um, statement purpose, commercial purpose. That's the sort of thing um, that you're going to be looking for because a lot of state statutes will limit commercial purpose. Um, once we look into here, uh, an, I, I know another wall of text, kind of scary, but we can break it down. Um, so what this first part says is that uh, when you make a public record request, um, and you have a commercial purpose in mind, you have to tell them that uh, you're using the data for a commercial purpose. Um, and OSM, as we all know, can be used by anyone um, under the terms of ODBL, including by companies. So anything that goes into OSM has to be available for use for a commercial purpose. Um, you, you know, if you had um, some you know, project of your own, and you wanted to use, uh, it was a non-commercial non project, uh, you could maybe do a layer of, you know, public records data, maybe like parcel or something like that, and have like the OSM row just to show um, relatively where things are, but you can't import the, anything into OSM that has a non-commercial limitation. Um, so what they say is, uh, if you are going to use it for a commercial purpose, the state can charge you um, extra for basically what it costs to make the data, uh, which is probably a lot, and OSM has no money. Um, so the, this, this also says, uh, you know, if you, if you get it, um, you, you can't, you know, make, you can't lie about whether or not you have a commercial purpose. And if you get it, you can't give it to somebody else who might have a commercial purpose. Uh, so you cannot like sneakily get some Arizona public data for your, you know, school research project and then sneak it into OSM. Um, and Arizona law also makes it really clear that commercial purpose isn't, um, will include anything where somebody might make some money later on, so. Um, the good news is, uh, even in states that have these laws that say that you can charge money for data, um, a lot of government entities still have put out a lot of data as open data. Um, just because they think that it is like in the interests of the public at large for that data to be out there uh, to be used. Um, that decision does get made on like a county by county basis, city by city basis, um, different you know, agencies. Um, so you do tend to see a wide variety even within the same state. So in terms of finding information. Um, usually with open data, there will be like an open data portal. Um, the website will have some information um, in a terms of service or FAQ about what the data can be used for, whether there are restrictions on it. Um, sometimes it'll be like on a page with where you download the data, there will be like um, a little note or they'll, it'll be in the metadata or in a file that accompanies the download. Um, OSM actually has like a lot of, the wiki has a lot of information about things that people have looked into before. Um, so if you've never looked at the imports page, um, you should. The forums are definitely a lot harder to search. Um, so one thing that LWG did this year is we put together the license compatibility page. Um, so this is a page where we put in a list of licenses that have already been evaluated by LWG at some point in, hist in, in the history of um, the group. And we've discussed, you know, do we think this is usually, incompa usually compatible or not? Um, the details are on uh, the OSMF wiki, so the link to that is at the top. Um, but I use some emoji to give you hints. 
Um, one thing that surprises a lot of people um, is that uh, how many licenses there are out there. A lot of times um, people will say, like, it's under this license, can we use it? And we're like, what license is this? We've never seen it before. Um, and then, it, you know, it takes some, some time to, um, to figure out what the answer is because we are all volunteers. Um, so I'm gonna talk more later on about how you can help us when you make those requests. Um, basically, when we're looking at a license to see whether or not it's compatible, these are the common issues that we're gonna look for. Um, a big one is whether or not the license requires a certain type of attribution. Um, if the license says that it's okay to, you know, attribute via link, um, you know, think back to the contributors page, right, where we're, um, you know, an OpenStreetMap attribution is going to link to that contributor page, and then that contributor page is going to link to all of those sources. Um, the license needs to um, be able to account, like, allow for that sort of linking attribution. Uh, obviously, if it doesn't allow commercial use, it's a no-go. Um, the, the next one is kind of unusual, which is there are some government data sets that will require you to use the most recent version. Um, you know, they'll say, sort of say, like, okay, this is from this date, this is the most accurate, and you have to use the most accurate version. Um, it's great that they're putting out more accurate data, but OSM doesn't have the capacity to guarantee that data is going to get updated on any particular schedule. So unfortunately, that's something that's going to block importation into OSM. Um, the next one is you probably aren't going to see in the US, um, but in some countries you'll see data from uh, government agencies that say that, they, that the license is for use within that country, for example. Um, and obviously, OSM is a global project. There are sometimes licenses that say that they can be revoked for any reason. Um, there are two types that you commonly see. One is just like a general statement, which is unfortunate because trying to delete data out of OSM is uh, difficult. <laughs> um, so we can't really uh, agree that that's going to happen, but there are also sometimes where they'll say like certain types of data um, can be uh, re sort of revoked or recalled. It tends to be personal data. The type of data that people will want to import into OSM is usually not personal data. Um, so that, so like in limitations on personal data is usually not a blocker. Um, but a lot of times you'll see licenses say like, you know, if basically if we accidentally release uh, personal information in our data set, we reserve the right to like recall that. Um, you know, I, it, practically speaking, that's not really a risk with the type of data that OSM is interested in. Um, indemnity clauses are also unfortunate. Um, like I said, OSM doesn't have any money. Uh, so, we can't afford to indemnify anyone. Um, it, and, and a lot of um, governments will include this as sort of this, um, this default of, you know, if you use this data, you agree to indemnify the government. If, you know, you put a road somewhere and somebody drives off a cliff and then they sue OSM and the government. Um, what, what is okay though is waiver clauses. So if it says like this is information, this is like, you know, for like information purposes only, you know, it's not, uh, you know, we don't guarantee accuracy, you promise not to sue us um, in case the da data is inaccurate, uh, that's totally fine. Uh, OSM is not gonna go sue any government about accuracy. Um, and uh, share alike clauses are, pretty much always going to be incompatible with OSM. Um, OSM has its own share alike clause um, that has very specific definitions about what has to be shared and what doesn't have to be shared. It is nothing like any other license at all. Um, 
And unfortunately, that means that any license with a share alike clause is almost certainly incompatible. Um, this is a problem that you see, I think, in open source and in other, um, other license areas where there's share alike as well. So I'm sorry for how small this is. Um, so this is, uh, this is an example of a license. Um, this is from the Bureau of Land Management. Uh, it's a little hard to read. Um, now, the important part is actually at the very top, which just says access constraints. And it says none. This data is considered public domain, um, which means the rest of it is actually not very useful. Um, it, you know, it, there's a, sort of this information about like, you know, uh, sort of this like disclaimer of like, you know, this might have errors in it, uh, we're not responsible, and you know, this might change over time. Uh, you know, you should like kind of check back, um, and how, get the most recent data. Uh, and then, you know, I also have this part that says like the Bureau of Land Management should be cited as the data source. Um, and if you modify it, you should tell people that it's modified. Um, but that's not actually a condition of using the data. Uh, this data is from the federal government. Um, it is public domain. It means you can do whatever you want with it. Um, but, you know, of course, you should, like, just as a matter of good data practices, uh, cite where your data is coming from um, so people can check back and see if it's still fresh and stuff like that. So you have to, you know, click you agree in order to get to the data, and then you have all this stuff uh, that you can download. Um, another example um, that's a little, that is, I'm just gonna give you some examples of different types of uh, licenses that you might see attached to data, just to give you some, some examples of um, the weird things you'll see out there. So uh, this, uh, says that it's from the Bureau of Reclamation, um, which is a U.S. federal agency. Um, but then you look into it. Oh, oh. So this is, mm, sorry, I got my slides uh, skipped. Um, okay, so this is from the city of Houston. And this is from uh, the webpage of the Open Data Portal. And it says, you know, this is, you know, we don't, we don't promise that this data is accurate. So there's a basic disclaimer. Seems good. There's no explicit information about whether or not this is public domain, whether or not there's a license attached to it. It's just kind of, you know, missing that information. Um, so, but then you, when you click into the data set, um, it has this little link that says custom license. Um, and it has the same information at the top, but then at the very end, it has this very strange copyright EGIS. So honestly, I don't know where um, this is actually from. I suspect that this data is from the city of Houston, and it was, it was um, uploaded using a program that's associated with EGIS. I don't think EGIS actually owns the copyright. And this is what I was saying earlier, which is a lot of times you will see copyright notices um, or statements attached to things um, somewhat oddly. Um, and so for something like this, your best bet is to write to um, the GIS manager at the city of Houston and say, you know, I saw this on your open data portal that said this, you know, this disclaimer. Um, it seemed like the data was otherwise in the public domain and open to e everyone to use. But then, um, you know, on the page to actually download the data, it has this sort of um, kind of weird um, little like dat date attached to the end. What is this? What is, is what does that actually mean? Um, and it might just be it might just be an error. So. Um, if you are in that kind of situation where you have a data set that you want to use, um, but you're not sure whether or not you can, um, and you are writing in to the city or to the agency to ask about it, um, so don't ask if it's compatible with ODBL. Uh, very few people know what ODBL is. Um, they will not be able to tell you. Um, and if you 
tell them, you know, if you ask them, is this compatible with this license? Uh, most um, of the people are going to say, like, that's not a question for me. That's a question for the lawyers. So they will pass this question to, you know, the city attorney's office or whatever. Um, that person will say, I don't know what ODBL is either. <laughs> so they will either um, put it off uh, and say, uh, you know, I don't have time for this. Um, or they'll go and try to research it, um, you know, spend... Uh, hours trying to read through um, ODBL online, get really confused, and say, I don't know, just tell them no. <laughs> um, also, don't ask if data is open. Um, people have really different understandings of what open data is. Some people think that if the data is sort of visible to the public, um, it's open data, even if like, people can't download it or do anything with it at all. Um, some people will consider uh, data that's available to re for research, so for only for um, non-commercial, non-profit purposes, they will consider that open data. Other people will say, well, um, you know, even if uh, it, there's like a lot of, um, a lot of conditions on use, uh, as long as you know, I allow someone to download it, it's, um, it's open. And some people think you know, it's not really open unless you can do anything you want with it, um, with no conditions at all. So the things to, that you really f want to find out, um, and this is going to depend on like, what you find initially in your research, right? If you, if you find um, some data and it doesn't have like any terms attached or only has like a waiver or a disclaimer on it, you're going to want to ask, um, is this data in the public domain? Um, or, you know, are there, are there conditions for using this data? Um, if you are, um, if you see like, you know, something that seems to suggest that maybe a third party might have been involved, you know, if there says copyright and then the name is like not the city, it's something else, um, you can ask, you know, did the city produce this data? Um, you know, is this something that it looks, you know, it looks like the city produced it, but is this something the city produced or is this something that maybe a third party produced and then, you know, gave to the city or sold to the city? In which case the city doesn't actually have the power to lift whatever those restrictions are and, you know, give that data out freely, right? Um, you, you can ask um, if, if it looks like there are some restrictions and you're not clear on what those restrictions are, um, what's really gonna matter to OSM is whether you can share that data freely with others, like you know everyone, right? And um, whether you can use commercially. Um, at least in the US, that's probably gonna be a sticking point with a lot of agencies. Um, for OSM, a lot of cities will grant waivers um, if you ask politely. Uh, so, for example, um, here is an example of some data. Um, it's a little hard to see, but there's a little CC BY symbol uh, next to um, the date and uh, feature layer. Um, so, CC BY uh, is not inherently compatible with OSM. Um, and that surprises a lot of people. Uh, but it's because uh, CC BY, if you actually go and read the legal terms, it requires um, that there be no DRM on anything that includes uh, a CC BY um, material. And unfortunately, with the way that ODBL is set up, you can have whatever the product is under something that is um, technologically controlled as long as you also make parallel distribution available. Um, so what uh, LWG has done is we put out a template for, uh, to request a waiver of those CC BY terms and to confirm that um, the data producer is happy with the attribution that um, OSM offers. So you, 
uh, we posted on this on the blog a couple of years ago. Um, if you need the template, you can go to the blog, you can download, there's a template letter as well as um, a template where the person can just kind of make, you know, from the city can make these statements and sign off. So, you know, if you're doing all of this work of like chasing down this information, uh, it's really important that you document it for whoever else is gonna come along next, whether you are going to be sending in this information to LWG and asking, okay, I found this, I found this, I found this, please let me know, um, do you think this is compatible? Um, or if you are you know, asking other people in the community, uh, or if you um, want to, like, you know, as part of the documentation for your import, right? You wanna make sure you link everything, you wanna make sure that you point people specifically to like specific sections of licenses. Sometimes they can get you know pages and pages long. Um, you don't want people to be like, oh wow, this is like really long. I have to read this whole thing. You want to say like, go to section like 2.5, right? Um, and you know like I don't think this you know this is the attribution section. It's not a problem because it says that linking is okay. For example. Um, and then if you do get a waiver, make sure that you include all of that information with um, your you know, import documentation. Uh, make sure you save the waiver and upload it to the wiki. Because in five years, if, some, if you know, the person that gave you that waiver at the city is left and somebody else is like, what is this? We want to be able to point, this, point back at this and say, no, we're, we're, um, OSM is okay. Um, and I know we have a lot of um, people who are representing government agencies uh, here at OSM. Uh, so I will just make a plea. Uh, please put your data in the public domain if you can, uh, or CC0. Um, PDDL is the public domain dedication license. Um, really, like any condition at all just makes it so much slower, if not impossible, for data to get imported into a huge project like OSM. Um, and it just is so much easier if that data is um, available without conditions. And um, this uh, bottom uh, quote is from the Open Government License of the United Kingdom. If you absolutely need a license that includes an attribution clause, uh, search for OGL version three, um, which is the most recent version as an example. Um, so I was gonna take questions, but I think I have to let you go for pictures. Um, so I, I am around um, and there is a birds of a feather on OSM attribution under the license at four o'clock um, in Minnesota. So you can ask me all the questions you want. We actually have time for two questions. Okay, we have you time for two, two questions according to our uh, coordinator. As long as they're good questions, short questions. <laughs> question. Hi, um, I have a question about waivers. So when you get a waiver, um, that's going to be between like a city or a government agency and the OSM foundation, is that true? So usually um, what the waiver is, what we'll say is, you know, like city um, agrees that data is um, available for uh, inclusion in the OpenStreetMap project. Okay. And so, so I, it's yeah. sort of like available to all of OSM. Right. So that would not have to involve someone from the OSM Foundation agreeing to that. Like it, it can be it just something not. that you do independently. Okay. Right. Great. It does not. Yeah. All right. Great. Thank you. Second one. Anyone else? Hi. Um, great presentation. I think I understood like 10% of it. Um, so I hope that the slides will be online um, for for a reading. Um, but I was wondering if you could. You kind of mentioned at the end this OGL. Um, 
license, the the the, uh, the open I, government license. The yeah, UK like open what, what yeah. that's about and how that works with o ODBL. Um, so the open government license um, is uh, compatible. Uh, the open government license of the United Kingdom version three is compatible with OSM. Um, it is a little bit confusing because there are open government licenses from a number of countries. Um, Canada, for example, has its own version. Each version is different. Even though they're all ca called open government licenses, I think because they were sort of inspired by each other, each country um, has its own terms, uh, cites to like its own country's laws, and you can't you can't predict whether one country's open government license will be compatible based on another country's open government license. Um, also, the UK is on version three. Um, part of the, re they, they really simplified it um, and made it cleaner and took out um, clauses and conditions that weren't totally necessary. Version one is not compatible with OSM. Um, so it is something to be really careful about um, there's a little, there's like a lot more detail about this in the license compatibility page that LWG put out. Um, but you do need to be really careful when you're looking at open government license of what countries you're looking at and what versions. Okay. Pictures? Great. Thank you, Kathleen. Let's give her a hand.